Hello, and welcome to lesson two. So today we'll be talking about angles and shapes and all kinds of good things. And we have actually quite a bit to get through. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin with, let's talk about lines. So if we think about lines, if I give you a pair of lines, so two lines, and they're in the same plane, which essentially means that they're being drawn on the same sheet of paper, we have two possible scenarios. One scenario would be that the two lines would look something like this. There's one, and there's two. All right, and because they're lines, we're going to assume, even if I don't draw the arrows, we're going to assume that these lines go forever in both the left and right directions. So this is one possible scenario. And what can we say about this? Well, we can say that they are, in fact, parallel, which means that they're not getting any closer together as they travel towards infinity, and they don't get any further apart. All right? They always stay the same distance apart. So this, again, is what we call parallel lines. So um, this should be a little bit of a review, but if uh, it's not something that you have ingrained in your head, make sure you write that down in your notebook so that you remember it for the future. The other possibility, when I give you two lines, is that we could end up with something that looks like this. Right? Where they do cross over each other. Now we could have all kinds of scenarios where they cross over. Uh, the, the, the angles may change. It could be that. It could be something like this, where it's kind of straight up and down. But the, the point remains that given two lines, they're either going to be parallel, like these two, or they're going to, at some point, cross over each other, like these two sets. And we call these, set, um, these sets intersecting lines. Intersecting lines. All right? And the point at which they intersect, we give that a special name as well. So this point right here, where they cross over each other, that point is called the intersection point. Pretty obvious. Intersection point. All right, so moving on, if we think about intersecting lines, intersecting lines form what's called angles. All right, so if we look at either one of these two intersecting lines over here, we could say that there are angles that are formed, which basically means that there are these angles here. So this would be one angle, and it's just kind of the, the direction that these lines leave the intersecting points. All right, this would be one angle. We could also see another angle right here. Right, this is another angle. And likewise an angle here, and even an angle here, right? So when we have two intersecting lines, we actually create four different angles. So let's talk about angles and what they are. So when we think about an angle, what we're describing is two lines, or I should even say line segments, or rays even. A ray, by the way, is just a line that has a beginning point but no ending point. So this would be a ray. Has a beginning point, but no ending point. And when we create angles, oftentimes we'll use rays. And the beginning point will be kind of the, the intersection point here. All right. So if I have my beginning point, and I have my, my two rays coming from that, I might have an angle that looks something like this. All right. And so when we think about angles, all we're talking about are two rays, and we're trying to measure sort of the distance apart. Um, if you think about this as kind of being like a scissors, okay, and these are the blades for a scissors, the angle is how open the scissors are. Or you might also say how closed the scissors are. So in this case, they're about halfway open. We would give an angle number to this. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's 47 degrees. All right, and we'll talk more about this in a second. But essentially, that's what we do with angles. We try to measure how open the angles are. 
All right. So the next question would be, okay, if we try to measure how open the angles are, how do we do that? And where did it come from? Well, actually, it was the Egyptians that first started doing this. But essentially, what we do is we take two rays that look like this. One's going flat out this direction. And then the other one is coming straight up. Okay, so we take this particular angle. And it's a very special angle, because the bottom is totally flat, and the top is going exactly straight up. All right. So the intersecting point or what's called with an angle, this this point now we're going to give it a name is called the vertex. Okay, so this point, the vertex um, is on a corner. It's on a perfect corner. If you picture this as kind of being a box, it's a perfect corner. Notice this would not be a perfect corner, right? It's kind of a pointed corner. This is a perfect corner, like it would be on a square. All right. So if we have that perfect corner, we give this angle a special name. We call this angle and we'll often draw a little box in here to indicate that this is a perfect corner. And we call this this angle a right angle very important. It's kind of the, the basis for all of our other angles, you might say. All right, so there's our right angle. Now, if we're, if we're trying to decide, you know, how open the scissors is here for this particular right angle, it turns out the Egyptians decided that we're going to call this 90 degrees open or a 90 degree angle. Okay, a little, bar, a little bit arbitrary, but that's what they decided to call it 90 degrees. All right, now what that means is if I were to take, let's say another angle, so let's say I'm going from this bot, oops, and maybe I'll just do the same color. If I'm going from the bottom to here, for example, oh, there we go, bottom to here, how open is that angle? Well, how open is this angle? How open is this angle? And of course, once we reach here, it's 90 degrees. All right, so if this is 90 degrees, well, then if I open it halfway, exactly halfway between the zero degrees, zero degrees would be closed, halfway to 90, well, then it's just a 45 degree, right? Because 45 degrees is half of 90 degrees. So once we've established this 90 degree, we've, we can figure out the 45 degree, it's half of it, all right? And then we could take that 45 degree and cut it in half, 22 and a half degree, right? Half of 45. All right. And then we could keep cutting it in half. And it, you know, and that way we can find all of these other degrees. Eventually, we can figure out what one degree is. And once we figure out what one degree is, well, then we just keep stacking one degrees on top of each other. And we have all of the degre degrees from zero to 90. So essentially, we're cutting this space up into 90 equal pieces. And using that to measure how open this angle is. All right. So that's kind of a long way of just saying that there are 90 degrees in a right angle. Okay, now what if we were to open it up even further? What if we were to open it up to here, and then keep going, really open it up, and maybe even open it all the way up so that it's flat? All right, what about that? Open it all the way up so that it's flat. How far did this angle open? Started here, and it went all the way to here. Okay, well, think about it. This first side is 90 degrees. Now the second side also forms a 90 degree angle. It's going the other direction, but you can still see the corner of the square right here. So we, we have another 90 degrees. So we have a 90 degrees on the, on the right a 90 degrees on the right left, which means we have a grand total of 180 degrees. So a flat line, you could say, is being opened 180 degrees. Okay. Now, if we extend this even further, let's say maybe I'll go a different color so it makes a little more sense. Let's say I start here, right? We're at zero and I open it up. Now I'm at 90 degrees. Now I'm at 180 degrees. Well, what happens if I go another 90 degrees, right? If I just continue and point this straight down, I know my line isn't in the perfect right spot here. There we go. All right, so now I'm going straight down. Well, what happened here? I went another 90 degrees, right? Do you see that? Do you see this square? 
right here. So I'm forming another 90 degree right here. So now, I, now I've gone 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and yet another 90 degrees. So at this point, when I've traveled from here all the way over to here, I've gone three 90s, which is a grand total of 270 degrees, right? And we might as well just finish this off. What happens if I start here at the beginning again? I'm at zero degrees. Now I'm at 90 degrees. Now I'm at 180 degrees, 270 degrees. What happens if I go all the way around and come back to where I started? So I start here and I go all the way around. Well, again, let's just add up our 90s. We have a 90 degree, a 90 degree, a third 90 degree, and then we have now a fourth 90 degree right here. So four 90 degrees gives us a grand total of 360 degrees. So if you travel 360 degrees, it means you've traveled completely around in a circle, right? So if someone says you turn in 360 degrees or you know make a 360 degree turn, it just means you turn all the way around so that you're right back to where you started, okay? Now, what's interesting about this is we have just proven in roughly, not, not strictly, but we, we have proven that there are, here we go, 360 degrees in a circle, all right? If I start with my center of the circle right here, and let's say I have a line, we'll learn later, it's the radius coming out here, and if I then measure the angle of these two radii as they spread apart. Again, the scissors is opening and closing. If I start here at the beginning and I go all the way around the circle, I have gone 360 degrees. So there are 360 degrees in every circle. So that is something to write down in your notebook. There are 360 degrees in every circle. And it doesn't matter how big the circle is, it doesn't matter how small the circle is, there are always 360 degrees in a circle. All right? Very good. So hopefully that gives you a, a good background on what an angle is and what degrees are. And by the way, you've probably noticed, but when you write degrees, it's always this small little circle up above the number. All right? Now let's talk about a few key things that are just um, a, a few vocabulary things. So we've already dis uh, discussed a right angle. Well, let's talk about um, a couple different lines here that we've given names because they're so common. So let's do that. So if I have something that looks like this, where I have essentially, you might say a line and then an array coming out of it. If it's coming straight up out of this line so that it forms two right angles, here's a right angle, here's a right angle. We give this a special name. This is called perpendicular lines. All right, so write that in your notebook. Whenever you have a line extending away from another line and they're forming a perfect square, a perfect corner, we consider those perpendicular lines. It's kind of the opposite of parallel lines, really. All right, and then we've got a couple of names for different angles. So let's say I've got an angle that looks like this. And we actually, just quick review, we already know what this angle is, right? We learned this one, what is, what is this angle? This angle is a, what is it? Right angle, right? Right angle, okay? Now, interestingly, we call it a right angle, but this is, this is also a right angle, even though it's not going to the right. Okay, doesn't really matter the direction or the orientation, um, but a right angle is always the one that forms a square corner. Okay, so whenever you see this little box, you know it's a right angle. All right, then we've also got angles that are greater than 90 degrees. So again, right angles, oops, right angles always have 90 degrees. If it's greater than 90 degrees, it might look something like this. And you can see that it started here and we went here. 90 degrees would be straight up into a corner. So 90 degrees is kind of sitting here. 
but this is greater than 90 degrees. So this, we have a special name for it. We call this an obtuse angle, okay? Obtuse angle. He's kind of a, a big angle. He's bigger than 90 degrees. He's obtuse, okay? And then you've got another kind of angle, which is less than 90 degrees. So you might have something that looks like this. Comes up like here and comes over here, all right? Notice that this is less than 90 degrees. 90 degrees would put you somewhere around here. So this is less than 90 degrees. We call this the acute angle. He's so cute. Cute and small. He's an acute angle. All right? So make sure you've got those in your notebook. If you have to, pause the video and, and get those in there. And then we'll move on here. All right, so next we're going to talk about polygons. All right, so we'll be getting into shapes here. So a polygon is one of the most basic shapes, but there are some, some rules that apply to polygons. So let's look at it. Polygons, the definition, and this, go ahead and write this in your notebook. A polygon is a simple, closed, flat, geometric figure whose sides are line segments. So let's talk about what simple, closed, and flat uh, means. All right, so let's take simple first. So a polygon is a shape, and it's simple. And what that means is a polygon will not have intersections. So if I take this shape, for example, this is not a polygon. And the reason it's not a polygon is because, whoops, it's because there are intersections in it. All right. If we look at this point right here, we see where the, the lines cross over each other. So therefore, this is not a polygon. All right. So that is what simple means. It just simply means there are no intersections. All right, now let's talk about what closed means. So closed means that there aren't any open edges. All right, um, so an example of something that is not closed would look something like this. All right, so this would be an example of something that is not closed. Right, and why isn't it closed? Well, it's pretty obvious. We have our line segments, but this edge right up here is, is missing. There isn't any connection here. So if there isn't a side on, on one part of the shape, then it's not closed, which kind of makes sense. Think of it in terms of a fence. It's not a closed in fence if there's an open side. Okay, so this is not a polygon. Again, not a polygon, all right? Um, so that's simple, that's closed, flat geometric. Well, what does flat geometric mean? Again, pretty simple. Uh, flat geometric just means that it can't be a three-dimensional shape, okay? So if you think about different shapes, this, for example, is not a um, flat geometric figure. Now, if you want to be very, very strict, you could argue that this drawing is flat. There, this does not come out of the page or go into the page, but the way it's uh, drawn, it kind of gives the illusion of coming out of the page, and that's on purpose. That's to show that we're trying to illustrate something that's not flat. Um, so flat just means it's two-dimensional, all right? It's, it's got no depth. It doesn't go into the page. It doesn't come out of the page, all right? And then finally, the shape has to have line segments. So that would indicate that something like, like this is not a polygon. All right, why not? Well, it doesn't, it's not composed of line segments. All right, remember line segments are, you could say, pieces of a line. And in math, when we talk about lines, we're always talking about flat lines uh, without any curves. So we cannot have curves in polygons. It's not a polygon if there's a curve in it. It isn't a line if there's a curve. All right, so this would not be a uh, polygon. Also, maybe something a little bit uh, trickier, um, something like this would not be a polygon either. Now here we have some line segments. So if you look at this, you can say that, oh, well, this, this here is, whoops, sorry. This here is a line segment right here. 
And you'd be right, that is a line segment. However, we have a curve over here. So no, this is not a polygon. So not a polygon, not a polygon, not a polygon. These are all examples of things that are not polygons. All right. Um, so what is a polygon? What does a polygon look like now that we know what it doesn't look like? Well, again, it's, it's simple, it's closed, it's flat, and it's made up of line segments. So this would be an example of a polygon. That is a good polygon. This is a good polygon. All right. Uh, maybe this is a good polygon. All right. So we've got all kinds of things that are polygons. This is another polygon. All right. Very good. So make sure you have this down um, in your definitions for your in your notebook. And then uh, one other note here, we'll just talk about a few things on a polygon. Actually, let's talk about um, some vocabulary again. So getting into that, when we talk about polygons, it's a little bit like our angles. When we have these corners, each of these corners is called a vertex. So just like when we talked about angles, th these corners have angles coming out from them. There's an angle, right? Here's an obtuse angle. So each of these corners, we call them a vertex. That's, that's the singular vertex. Or if we're talking about all of them, we would refer to them as vertices. Okay. So that's the plural vertex or vertices. Okay, very good. So now let's talk about some kinds of polygons. Now that we know what it is, there are so many polygons that mathematicians have decided to kind of divide them up into families, so to speak. So there are some different kinds that we can talk about. The first time kind is the equilateral polygon. All right, now you see the word equal in there, or you almost see it right? So when you think of equilateral polygons, think of polygons whose sides all have the same length, all the sides are equal. All right, pretty simple. Let's take a look at a couple. So this is an equilateral polygon, all of the sides have the same length. Interestingly, this is an equilateral polygon. Again, all the sides have the same length. And then maybe just one more example. This is also an equilateral polygon. Now be careful, this is not a circle, right? Because it's made up of line segments. So we still don't have any curves in here. So that's good because we need that in order for it to be a polygon. But all of these little line segments, they are all the same length. So this would be an equilateral polygon. Whenever you see that word lateral, Lateral means side. So you have kind of equal, lateral, lateral meaning sides, equal sides. All right. All right. Now let's talk about the next one. Equal angular polygon. Now here you almost see that word equal again, but now at the ending of the word is angular. Angular means angle, right? So this means equal angles. So all the angles are equal. So if we look up here at our first examples, there are a couple of them here that are not only equilateral, they're also equal angular. All right, look at the different angles that are composed by these shapes. So here we have an angle in this corner off of this vertex. That's the same angle as this angle. Now they're facing the different direction, but they are the same size. The opening is the same. And that was, those openings are the same as the opening up here. So this shape, this triangle, would also be equal angular, which is kind of interesting. Okay. Now, this one's also equal angular. Each one of these angles, it's really big. They're, they're way over 90 degrees. They're definitely obtuse angles, but they're all equivalent. They're all the same. This one, however, is not equal angular. So this is a good example of one that is an equilateral polygon, but not an equal angular. If you look at these angles, this one is a certain angle, which would be equal to this one, all the points of the star have equal angles, right? However, these angles are obviously bigger, right? These outside angles, they're, they're bigger than the pointy, uh, the tip, the point angles. Okay, so the angles are not all the same there. 
So this is not an equal angular. It is an equilateral. Okay? <clears throat> Great. Now let's talk about regular polygons. Regular polygons, our angles and sides are equal. All right? So if we label these as, you know, number one, number two, and number three, are any of these shapes regular? Which means that the angles and the sides are equal. So what do you think? One, two, or three? Are any of those equal or regular polygons? Well, the answer is yes. And it goes back to what we were just talking about a minute ago. Which ones of these shapes are both equal angular and equilateral? If they're both of these, then they're considered regular. All right. So this first one, number one, is a regular polygon. The angles are, the, are equal and the sides are equal. Number two is a regular polygon. The angles are equal, the sides are equal. Number three is not a regular polygon because the angles are not equal, although the sides are. All right, so now that you have a basic understanding of the different kinds of polygons, just a couple of housekeeping rules here when we're writing these. Whenever you see these shapes, you may find that some of them have this tick mark, it's called. A tick mark is just a line that just extends through one of the sides of the shape. And the reason we, we write those on shapes is because sometimes things are not to scale necessarily in your textbook. So sometimes sides that look like they're the same length are intended to be the same length, even if it's not perfect. So if we intend that these all three of these sides are the same length, we'll put a tick mark through each side. So if I have a tick mark there, a tick mark here, and a tick mark here, all that means is that these three sides with the single tick mark through it are actually the same length. All right? It's kind of important to recognize that so you don't, so you don't get confused when you see these, these weird markings. All right? So if I give you another example here, all right? So here, it's clear that all of the sides are not intended to be equal, right? This bottom side is quite a bit smaller than the two other sides. Uh, but if we wanted to make sure that students understand what's equal, we might draw, whoops, excuse me, we might draw a tick mark through this side and a tick mark through this side. And that just indicates that the two sides with the tick marks are equal, okay? Sometimes we might have something that looks like this. All right. And here we have kind of multiple pairings uh, that we could do. So we might say that, okay, for this particular line or shape, excuse me, this, whoops, this uh, side is meant to be equal in length to this side. So we'd put two tick marks there. Maybe this line here is also meant to be the same length. So we have these three sides that are meant to be the same length. But then also notice that these remaining two sides also have what appears to be the same length. And so to show that they have the same length, we're going to draw two tick marks so we don't get confused as to who we're pairing things with. So the two tick marks, they match with each other. The single tick marks all match with each other. All right. So that's just kind of some some written explanation or, you know, uh, indications as to the properties of these lines. So just match up the tick marks that indicates which lines are the same length. Let's look at some more specific polygons. Now, this should be a review for the most part, hopefully from past classes. But we do need to just make sure that we have a refresher on the different basic shapes. So first of all, we have the triangle. All right, so tri means three, angle means angles. So we have three angles, so it's a three-sided polygon, right, with three angles. Pretty simple. So there's our, our triangle, right? Now, it does come in different shapes. I mean, we could have something that looks like that. We could have something that looks really long and skinny like that. So multiple different ways that we can create triangles, but ultimately, it simply means that there are three sides, right? All right, quadrilateral. Well, quad means four. Remember, lateral means side. So a quadrilateral just means a four-sided polygon. A four-sided polygon. So the most basic one is probably the rectangle. That's a quadrilateral. All right. Now, we could have some variations 
of a rectangle. Maybe it's not, it doesn't have 90 degree corners. Maybe it looks something like this. Or maybe it's equilateral, where the sides are the same. Okay, so all of these would be considered quadrilaterals because there are four sides. Right? And then, of course, we move on to okay, well, what happens if we have more than four sides? What happens if we have five sides? And if we have five sides, we call it a pentagon. So here is an example of a pentagon. Now I could draw a couple different kinds of pentagons. Here's a pentagon that's not equilateral. There are five sides, but they don't all have the same length. This bottom one is obviously a lot longer than this side one. So this is not an equal angular, or excuse me, equilateral uh, polygon, nor is it equal angular. The angles are all different. I could draw another one that looks something like, like this. It doesn't quite look like it, but it should be that all sides are the same length. So that one would be equilateral. All right, still five sides, so it's still a pentagon. So just to clarify, this is a three-sided, quadrilateral is a four-sided, pentagon is a five-sided, hexagon, what do you think a hexagon, hexagon is going to be? Yeah, it's going to be a six-sided shape. So if we look at an example of a six-sided shape, it would look something like this. There's our six-sided hexagon. Heptagon, well, take a guess. Heptagon, yep, take a guess. What is it? It's seven-sided, right? So it's going to look something like, like this. All right. And then, of course, the octagon is going to look like this. Eight-sided. Oops. Eight-sided. All right. So those are some of the basic polygons. Now we could go on. Um, eventually, we just kind of get to the, the uh, you know, the point where we just have too many sides to talk about. All right. So moving on, now we're going to talk about specific quadrilaterals. So we're just kind of going from the very general to the more specific. All right. So we started by talking about polygons. That's very general. That's a huge family of shapes. And then inside that family of shapes, we subdivided divided it into these different shapes based upon, or these different classes, based upon the number of sides that each of these polygons have. Now we can take these families and subdivide them further into these particular shapes, very specific shapes. All right. So first off, we have the parallelogram. All right. If we go back to here. A parallelogram simply means shapes in which the sides are parallel with each other. Now, remember, that goes all the way back to the beginning of the lesson. What do parallel lines mean? It means they don't get any closer together or further apart. So if we look at some of these shapes, where do you see some shapes that have parallel lines? Well, you don't see them in the triangle, right? The triangle will never be a, parallel, a parallelogram because the, the sides are always going to intersect at some point. The lines that they create. So if I have a line following this side, it's going to go up like this. But then if I have a line that follows this side, obviously these two lines intersect at this point. So that is not a parallelogram. We have intersecting lines. And that's going to be true for every triangle. Quadrilaterals, however, give us a much better option here. So quadrilaterals, look at this. We've got a line following the top and then a line following the bottom. They are parallel. And then lines coming down the sides they're parallel with each other. So the two opposite sides are parallel. Now, you know, this side is not parallel with this side, but that's okay. The definition of a par parallelogram is the opposite sides are parallel with each other. So the top and bottom are parallel and the two sides are parallel. Same thing applies here. This we have the two sides. These two have to be parallel in order to be a parallelogram, and they are. And then the bottom and the top have to be parallel and they are. So that would also be a parallelogram. This one would also be a parallelogram. What about these pentagons? Would they be parallelograms? No, right? Because if you think of opposite sides, if I take this side here, all right, and take its opposite side, which would be this side, they're obviously going to, and I didn't draw these long enough, but they're obviously going to you know, intersect at some point down here. So that is not a parallelogram. Hexagons, same thing. 
and heptagon, octagon, the rest of them going up. They are going to be, uh, they're not going to be parallelograms. So the biggest uh, category that includes parallelograms is the quadrilateral, okay? So let's go back to other screens. So parallelograms, the definition begins with, it's a quadrilateral. It's the only family of shapes that fits the definition for a parallelogram, all right? And it has two pairs of parallel sides. So maybe we'll just draw one here for reference. Um, and we could draw a couple different kinds, but we'll just draw a nice rectangle to show this. Maybe I'll draw two. So we have that one. This would be a, a, a parallelogram. Uh, a variation might be... Uh, this one this one is also a parallelogram Oops. right so those two shapes are parallelograms now let's talk about a rectangle so now we're actually taking a parallelogram family all of these parallelograms and we're dividing that up into even a smaller family and it's called the rectangle family all right and a rectangle is simply a parallelogram so it is a parallelogram, but it's a very specific one. It has four right angles in it. So looking up here, is number one a rectangle or is number two a rectangle or are both rectangles based upon the definition of a rectangle? Well, the answer is number one is a rectangle, right? Because it has to have four right angles. And number one clearly has four right angles in the corners and number two does not. So this is going to be, oops, this is going to be a rectangle. Okay, so we're very specific there. That's really the only way a rectangle could look. We could change its size a little bit, but that's, and we could even argue that this is a rectangle. Now, a lot of people would say, oh, that's a square, and they'd be right, but we'll find out in our next definition. A square is simply a parallelogram with four right angles which means it's a rectangle, right? And four equal sides. So it is included in the rectangle family, but we're even more specific now in saying not only does it have to be a rectangle, it has to have four equal sides. Okay, so that's about as specific as we can go. We went from a parallelogram, which includes these two, and then a rectangle, which includes just this one, but it could also include, you know, these, these squares as well. Okay, and then we go to, from there to a square, which says, okay, it needs to be a rectangle, but we want a specific rectangle that has four equal sides. Okay, so you could argue a square is a rectangle, which is a parallelogram, which is a quadrilateral. <laughs> Think about that for a second. All right, now let's talk about a rhombus. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four equal sides. Okay. So the difference here between a square and a rhombus is that the rhombus does not require four right angles. All it's required is four equal sides. So you could argue even that a square is indeed a form of a rhombus, okay? Because it does have four equal sides and that's all that's required, all right? However, there are other shapes that are rhombuses but not squares. So an example of that shape would look something like this, right? And it's where we have equal sides. Ooh, wrong one. Equal sides, right? So we have that going for us, but we don't have right angles, right? These don't make perfect corners. So this is not a square, but it is a rhombus because it has four equal sides. Okay? All right, then we could say a trapezoid. A trapezoid is kind of the oddball one because a trapezoid has different uh, lengths to its four sides. It's first of all, it's a quadrilateral, so it does have four sides. However, these four sides don't have the same angles, okay? Which basically means, um, so now let's talk about a trapezoid. A trapezoid, it is a quadrilateral, okay? So that's, that's clear, it's a quadrilateral, and it has exactly two parallel sides. So it's a little bit different than the parallelogram. The parallelogram requires two sets of, e of parallel sides. All the sides have to be parallel with their opposite side. 
two pairs of parallel lines. Okay, a quadrilateral simply has exactly two parallel sides. Now it's a quadrilateral, which means it has how many sides? Four, and we have two parallel sides. So it would look something like this. So here we have our sides. This is our, our top side. Whoops, our top side here. If we think about a line that's in that same that same direction going forever like that. And if we think about the bottom one, creating a line there, going in the same direction forever, we see that they are actually parallel with each other. So these, these, the top and bottom are parallel. However, if we look at the sides, we note that this side is kind of going like that. And this side is, ooh, that's terrible positioning. This side is going like this right? And eventually, these two are going to cross over each other. So they're not parallel. So we have exactly two parallel sides, instead of the two pairs of parallel sides, which would make four parallel sides in total for the parallelogram. All right, so that is the trapezoid. Excellent. So those are kind of the five most common shapes. Okay, now that we've got a firm grasp of all the different kinds of shapes, we need to spend some time on triangles. All right, so get your notebook ready because there are some, some terms and definitions here that you're going to need to write in there. So facts to know. Any triangle, given a triangle, remember we talked about, you know, these shapes, these polygons, they're composed of line segments that make angles. So these angles we've already talked about have degrees. And for a triangle, a really cool thing is can be shown and that is that for any triangle if you add up all of these these degrees so this one's 60 this one's 60 as well they're all equal this is an equal angular actually it's a regular triangle it's equal lengths and equal angles 60 degrees all right they're all 60 degrees and if you add those up you end up with 180 degrees and what's interesting is every triangle is composed of 180 degrees. So if you add up all the angles for any triangle, and it could be any goofy triangle you want to try to create, it might be, you know, something that looks like something that looks like this, you know, some weird wacky triangle with really sharp angles or what have you, this will still have 180 degrees in it once you add up all of these angles. Okay, so it's just a it's just a fact. So write that down in your notebook. That is hugely important. You'll be using that a lot. The sum of all the angles of a triangle is going to be equal to 180 degrees. All right. Then let's talk about a right triangle. A right triangle simply means that one of the angles has to have 90 degrees. So it's going to look like this. Okay, very simple. Find the 90 degree. Do you see the 90 degree angle in there? The 90 degree angle is right here. I can draw that, that box right here. So this is the 90 degree angle. This is called a right triangle. Remember we, we called the 90 degree angles right angles. So it makes sense to call this a right triangle. Okay. Okay. Then you have the acute triangle. You might guess where this is going because it matches what we were talking about with our angles. An acute triangle simply means that all angles are under 90 degrees. So our first triangle that we drew right here, this one is an acute triangle because all of the angles are under 90 degrees. All right. And then you have the obtuse triangles. We did, we did this one. Now let's look at the obtuse triangle. An obtuse triangle simply means that one angle is greater than 90 degrees. And this is actually an example of an obtuse triangle. Notice this bottom one here, this is huge. This is a huge angle right here. It's almost a flat line. So it's well over 100 degrees in this angle, all right? And because we have one angle that's greater than 90 degrees, it's called an obtuse triangle, all right? And then you have the equal angular triangle, which is kind of a, you know, it's kind of a subcategory of the acute triangle. The equal angular triangle is where all the angles are the same. All right. And that would be an example of this, this one right here. 
all the angles are the same. We call this an equal angular triangle. Now, not all um, acute triangles are going to be equal angular. If I have a triangle that looks like this, for example, all right, let's take a look at that. Notice that they're not equal angular. These angles are actually bigger. They're the same. I might even draw out some tick marks. These lines are the same. Uh, these angles are the same, but this angle is much smaller than these two. So this is not an equal angular triangle. However, all the angles are smaller than 90 degrees. So this would be an acute triangle, but not an equal angular triangle, just to give you an example. And then we have the isosceles triangle. And the isosceles triangle has two sides of equal length. And lo and behold, that's what I just drew right here. We have these two sides with our tick marks. They're equal in length. The third side is not the same size. So that is an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle. That's an important one. You'll see that one a lot. And then finally, you have the equilateral triangle in which all sides have the same length. So it's very similar to the equal angular. All angles are the same. Equilateral means all the sides are the same. So this would be an example of an equilateral triangle as well. All the sides, if I draw my tip, tick marks, all the sides are the same. All right. So get those down in your notebook. Become familiar with them. I know it sounds kind of confusing. There's a lot of definitions and some of them overlap with each other. But get that down in your notebook so that you'll understand what they refer to uh, later on in your... So now let's look at a few very important and perhaps a little bit tricky properties of triangles. So if I just write them out, this is what they would be. The angles opposite sides of equal lengths have equal measures. Now that may not have sounded like it made any sense to you at all. It will in a second. And then secondly, the sides opposite angles of equal measures have equal lengths, all right? So when we think about triangles, there are a couple components. We have angles. So this is an angle, this is an angle, and this is an angle. And then we have sides, which of course, you know, this is a side, this is a side, and this is a side, right? So we have angles and we have sides. And there is a relationship between those two. So that means that if one is a certain way, it's going to affect the other. So if you think about, for example, triangles, if I take Maybe if I draw this triangle here, if I, you know, shorten the length of my bottom line of this triangle. So look at the bottom line. If I shorten that, what happens to the angle up on top of the triangle? Well, it starts to close, right? So the shorter I make that bottom line, the more that top angle closes. On the other hand, if I lengthen the bottom line, that top angle opens right continues to open as I lengthen so the lines the length of the line impacts the angle on the opposite side so it's all about kind of opposite sides so you look at that bottom line right here okay what's the opposite angle to this line it would be this angle up here Right? So whenever we see, say opposite, we mean on the other side of the shape. So we have a line here. Its opposite angle is going to be this angle up on top. On the other hand, if I'm talking about this line, the side line here, all right, what's its opposite angle? Its opposite angle is going to be this angle. right? And then finally, if I'm talking about this line, its opposite angle is going to be this opposite angle. All right, so that's kind of how we deal with angles and lines. When we're comparing them, we talk about opposites. All right, and like I just said, the length of the line impacts the angle. On the other hand, you could think about that the other way. You can think about it as the size of the angle will impact the line. So if I have this shape and I want to take the top angle, the point of the shape at the top, if I want to open that angle up, if I want to make it larger, all right, what's going to happen to the bottom line? The bottom line has to get bigger. There's no way around it. As I open that angle, the bottom line has to get bigger. So if I want to adjust length of sides of a triangle, it's going to impact the angles of the triangle. On the other hand, if I want to influence the angles, it's going to impact the lengths of the sides. 
So the two are related to each other. So there's a couple of key things that we can observe here. And that is if we look at a triangle and if we look at two sides that have the same length, all right? So that would be this example here. Here I have this side, which is the same length as this side. There are my tick marks. It's not the same length as the bottom, all right? So if we have two sides that are of equal length, their opposite angles will be equal as well. So now we need to find the opposite angles. So if we're talking about this side, what's the opposite angle to this side? It'd be this angle, right? Just like we talked about over here. It's on the opposite side of the shape. It'd be this angle. So those two match. Now, if I'm talking about this side, what's the opposite angle for that side? The opposite angle is this angle. All right? So the rule is, if you have equal sides, and this side is equal to this side, we know that by the tick marks, then their opposite angles are equal. So that means this angle and this angle are equal. They're the same angle, whatever they are. Maybe it's 50 degrees, all right? But if we know one of them, we know that the other is going to be equal to that. Okay, does that make sense? Now, on the other hand, if I have, if we, if I want to look at the angles instead of the sides, so let's say I'm looking at this angle, and let's say I, I'm telling you that that is 60 degrees, and I'm looking at this angle, and I'm telling you that that is also 60 degrees. If I have two angles that are equal, their opposite sides are also going to be equal. All right, so now I'm kind of doing the reverse. I'm looking at the angle. So if this is the angle that I want to look at, this one here, what's the opposite side? The opposite side is this line, right? That's the opposite side to this angle, all right? And then if I'm looking at the other angle, let's say now I'm looking at this angle, which is equal, we know that, these are equal angles. So I'm looking at that angle and I'm saying, okay, where is its opposite side? Its opposite side is gonna be over here, right? And because I've said that they are equal in angle, and excuse me, they are equal in angles, then these sides are going to be equal. We can say that. These two sides, we can put tick marks there. They're going to be equal because these two angles are equal. All right? Excellent. So think about that for a second if it doesn't make sense because you'll be using that in your seat work. All right. So I think we've covered all of the the important things today. I know it was a lot of information today, but let's just end the class by doing a couple of examples and kind of putting into practice some of the things that we have learned. So here we've got a couple of shapes and I want you to find the X. What is the X, whatever that is for any particular shape. So if we look at this first shape, we're given a triangle, we've get, we're given some information on the triangle, and then I've got this X down here. So I want you to find this angle based on the information that's given to us. What do you think? I'll give you a second. If you want to pause the video, give it a try. Actually, if you want to try all three, you can try all three, and then we'll do them together and see how you did. All right, so how did you do? Well, let's take a look at this. So this is a 90 degree right here. This is a 90 degree. So this is a right triangle, just to kind of review some of our nomenclature. All right. Now, what do we know about triangles? Well, all the angles have to add up to 90 degrees. Or excuse me, 180 degrees. They have to, the sum of all the angles has to be 180 degrees. Remember, we talked about that. Now, because this is a right triangle, they didn't tell us, but we know that this angle has to be 90 degrees. So we know the measurement of two of the angles, and we know that the whole thing has to sum up to 180. So, or, excuse me, yeah, 180. So we take 180, and if we subtract from that this 90 plus 50, which is 140, we're left with 40 degrees left over. So that means that this X has to be equal to 40 degrees because they have to add up to 180. Okay, so that is the solution for that X. Now, what about this one? 
Here we have a triangle and notice the tick marks, right? So we've got tip, tick marks on all sides. That means all the sides are the equal length. And if all sides are equal length, that means we have an equilateral triangle, okay? And because we have equal lengths, we can go back to our rule, you know, um, describing angles and their relationship to their sides. And we can say that, okay, then their opposite angles have to be the same as well. But because all three sides are equal, that means all of their opposite angles, which is going to mean all of the other angles, are all equal. So this, this is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is equal to this. Okay, so we have three equal angle measurements. Now we know that the whole sum has to add up to be 180 degrees. So if there are three angles, they're all equal, and they have to add up to 180 degrees, we can take 180 degrees and simply divide that by three to come up with 60 degrees for each angle. So x is going to equal 60 degrees, and this one is also going to be 60 degrees, and this one's also going to be 60 degrees. Again, we know this because they have to add up to 180, and because of our tick marks here, we know that all the angles are the same. So the only way they can all be the same and add up to 180 degrees is if they are all 60. Okay? All right, and then this one here. So here we have different lengths. None of the sides are the same. We're given two degree measurements for two of the angles, 101 degrees and 40 degrees. We need to find x. What should we do? Well, again, it falls back to that very important fact that all triangles have to have 180 degrees in it. So we simply take our 180 degrees, we subtract from it the 141 degrees, which would be these two added together, right? We subtract the 141 degrees from the 180, and what do we get? We get 39 degrees. So x has to equal 39 degrees. There it is. All right? Very good. Two last ones here. Go ahead and try these two. These are probably as tricky as they're going to get. See if you can do these. If you can, that's great. Then I, I think you have a very good understanding of what we learned today. All right, so let's see how you did. So here we have a triangle. Let's just look at what they've given us. The two sides we know are equal. Third one is not. So this is an isosceles triangle. Two sides are equal. They've given us one degree and two that are unknown. So now we have to find two things, x and y. So because it's an isosceles triangle, we know these two sides are the same, which means, remember, their opposite angles are the same. So what's the opposite angle of this side? It's this one. So that angle is going to be equal to the opposite angle from this side because these two sides are the same. So its opposite angle is going to be equal. So this, these two angles at the bottom have to be equal. And they've given us one, 70. So therefore, we know what the x is. Since they have to be equal, the x has to be 70 as well. All right? Now, what does that mean y is? Well, once we've found two of these angles, the third is always easy because it's just subtracting from 180 degrees. So we have 270 degrees. That adds up to 140 degrees. So what's left over if they have to add up to be 180? 180 minus 140 is 40 degrees. So y is equal to 40 degrees. And there we go. All right, let's take this last one. Again, we're trying to find two sides, uh, or excuse me, two angles. And what do we know? Well, they've told us here by numbers in this case that these two sides are, in fact, equal in length. All right, these two sides are equal in length. So because they're equal in length, their opposite angles are equal. So what does that mean here? Well, that means that for this side, its opposite angles here so that angle is going to be equal to the angle on the opposite side of this side, which is this angle. So these two angles, x and y, have to be equal. So x is going to have to equal y. They're the same. All right. Now we know that the third angle is 110 degrees. So, And we know that the whole thing has to add up to be 180. So if we take 180 minus 110, we're left with 70 degrees. Okay, so that means somehow this x and y have to add up to be 70 degrees. So you could have, you know, maybe a 50 and a 20, 
you know you could have a 60 and a 10 obviously a bunch of different combinations however we do know that x has to equal y they have to be the same thing so we just simply take that 70 and divide it by 2 what's 70 divided by 2 it's 35 so therefore x and y both have to be 35 degrees so x is 35 degrees y is 35 degrees all right very good. So those will probably be as tricky as they can make them Ooh. for you. Oh, my pen just totally went weird on me. There we go. So if you were able to do those, that's great. I think you'll do your seat work very well. If you weren't able to do those, make sure you understand how I got to the solutions and then you are ready for your seat work. So we will conclude this class now. I know it was a long one today. We had a lot of information to get through. Hopefully you have all of this in your notebook. I would say take it home and study it tonight. Make sure you're just clear on all of these shapes and all of these facts and, and so on. Um, but uh, uh, we will stop here and I will see you tomorrow.